Um, in the Times today, there was a story where they had a letter from Dawn Butler and some of the other, how do you say it, non-white MPs or mixed race or whatever, all in the mix MPs to Pretty Patel. Who I so like, but they but they ended up almost making her look good, which I don't think they have done because that's almost impossible. But they basically, you know, they've done this letter on the basis of, you know, I mean, it's just very weird. It's tone policing, isn't it? It's fucking tone policing. It's, it's, it's weird. Um, you know, just because you don't like her, it's just, that move is weird. Um, anyway, so I'm, that's context on the background. But then back to the thing that we were talking about. Um, there's now another story. Billy Kember, again, investigations at the Times. Um, they're putting more in. They put photograph in there of the development. But um, again, there, that's it. They've got the Labour Party guy, Steve Reid. Steve Reid, who's a kind of housing minister. But everyone, it's like all this hand wringing and everybody getting really, really upset. And no one is really talking about the development like you did. Well, I mean, it, it's nuts. I mean, the. You've got to provide the context. What is that development? What is it providing? What are other developments? What are they providing? And in the general context of um, the pipeline of, 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 of planning consent across London, how many are coming out of the ground? Which ones are coming out of the ground with a successful affordable housing offer? I would question whether any of the affordable housing offers are all of that successful. Um, I, that is not the best development for them to nail their co their colours to the mast of because it oh, is because oh, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one, and and it actually there's quite a lot in it for the community, a hell of a lot, and so they picked something which you know, could almost be seen as a blueprint of how to how to do it. And they've turned that into the pantomime villain. It, it's 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 back to front. Oh, well, it's to ask backwards. I mean, it's. Yeah. But OK, so, so if for, for a few moments, can we just contemplate what do you think is going on? Why is this happening? I think you told me yesterday, but you can do it pretty concisely this time. I mean, I, I, I think they're clutching at straws and any anything will do to try and bash Boris Johnson's government. It's, it's obvious there's a big push to discredit his handling of this uh, flu business. Mm. And um, the Brexit extension date is coming up in a couple of weeks. It's all about, I mean, that's that's really where this is, what it's okay. like. And they're, and they're, they're slating Keir Starmer as being this wonderful saviour of the opposition, which, I mean, anyone that buys that bullshit, as you know, they really ought to go back to school. I mean, it, it's... Like I said yesterday, there's no there there on Westbury Road. It's all innuendo and all the rest. I, I actually went on and looked at the um, Members' Interest Register, for Mayor John Biggs when he was an Assembly member. And I found one thing. Uh, he, he was actually entertained to um, dinner by Mace, the contractors on West Ferry Printers, when he was an Assembly member. <laughs> there, there's some very expensive tickets to West Ham football, which he's been invited to. Ah. I, I, mean, I, did, I, I posted these in his thread. No, it, it's basically, you know, those in glass houses shouldn't... <laughs> really... Uh, and, 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 you know, his, his, as mayor of Tower Hamlets, if you look at his register of interests, you know, th there's nothing remarkable in it. But if you wanted to, you could sort of say, well, OK, you turned down the hospitality package amounting to £800 at West Ham Football Club. But you've been to three matches um, to the tune of about 380 quid a, a pop, you know. How does that square with the average person in housing need in Tower Hamlets? You know, well, how, how do you justify this? I mean, I, like I said, there's no there there in his case either, in my opinion. Yeah. But what he's doing. But, but he's is, still using it. It's people in glass houses throwing stones. It's nuts. 
OK, so can I just give you a tiny summary from my memory of just a one quick skim of today's version of the story? And that's that they've now gone to say that um, Johnson was in uh, more than in a room, but, you know, was having conversations with Desmond when he was the, um, you know, about the same project five years ago. You know, yeah, but he was obviously mayor he, then. He was the mayor of London and that scheme was determined by the mayor of London, I think, at the time. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, you told me that this time um, Sadie Sadie Khan, Khan has pushed it over to Tower Hamlets. That, that seems to what's happening. He sort of said, look, nothing to see here. I agree with you guys. You can go ahead and deal with it. Right. That's the mayor can do that. Now, they, then what happened was they were taking their time over it, taking longer than they actually have. And Westbury printers said, well, no, we're going to kick it upstairs. You've, yeah. you've taken quite long enough. We'll, we'll get it referred upstairs, which is their right. Yeah, we can't and, just hang around forever. Yeah. And, and then that's where this story then starts and where they take it up from. But um, all of that history is relevant, but none of it helps their case. There's a consented scheme which has 700 uh, homes, OK, 100 of which are affordable, has the secondary school and the pitches and stuff. So it's still a good scheme. Um, and some people would prefer that scheme because it's lower rise. Right. The new scheme has got an additional 300 affordable homes and, you know, other bits and pieces of offer. It's still got the school and all the rest of it. Right. So that's the next thing. So it's better. So, next, so it's better. Okay. It's better in terms of delivering more affordable homes. Yes, yes that's what I'm thinking. And, yeah. and it's, it's also got so it's got 300 extra affordable homes. OK, it's still got the school, which is great. It's still got oodles of public space. It, it, it'll be a nice place to be this one. It's a really high quality development. People <laughs> will want to hang out there. Right. So it's, it, it's got a lot of things. People who don't like tall buildings. And then obviously the, the wind impact for the sailing centre. I mean, I care about the wind impact for the sailing centre, but, you know, the, the, um, that, that's, that's been addressed. I mean, what they've said is for novice sailors, it, it could be a bit more of a challenge than it ordinarily would be. Um, now, I, I happen to like tall buildings. I always have. I, I, you know, I, 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 I'm a bit of a skyscraper nut, you know. So, you know, so I don't have the same objections to a lot of the, I, I, I think that a lot of the system built 50s, 60s, 70s uh, uh, social housing that was built was really poorly executed and, and not not good. OK, so I agree with all of that. So I agree also with the empty homes people, you know, and their report about the investment properties being vacant, left vacant, oversupply at the end of the month. I agree with all of that. Right. Now, when you then come back and say, well, what is this scheme? Right. OK. The affordable element is all in there and, and, and it's not off site, it's on site. It's got the school, all the rest of it, all the nice public space. And then there's the commercial element, which obviously they've got to sell because that's what pays for everything else. Yeah. Right now. And I said yesterday, I would prefer, you know, to see them sell that to people living in it. You know, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and not uh, Airbnb. Yeah. Not rent it, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree with all of that. Um, but the, the simple fact is that it's a commercial development and you have to, um, it, the money has to come where, from somewhere to pay for this. So then that gets to the final point, right? Was it determined early to save 50 million quid? It, it looks like, you know, that wasn't unknown to Robert Jenrick. And, 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 and even if Richard Desmond had actually mentioned it, you know, so what is it? That's important information because um, it, it's quite legitimate to say, look, if I have to pay another 50 million quid over and above these other things, we're going to have to make some savings elsewhere. Yeah, you know, less affordable housing. Yeah, it, it's a lot of money. Right. But there's already a lot of going into, to, you know, to what's already there. And that's as it should be. I'm not I'm, I, I don't disagree that, you know, these these things need to be met, right? But they're going about it in completely the wrong way, and they seem to be putting their political point scoring against 400 affordable homes, a brand new secondary school, three sports pitches, a, a community centre, a creche, and a new health centre. Now... <laughs> 
How do you object to that? <laughs> that it sounds like the Houses of Parliament, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, you know so so, so it's they they they've picked the wrong runner in this race. This isn't it, you know. They they they're a, they should be ranging their fire on the spire, you know, which is overdevelopment. It's not, you know, got anything to do with the people. The affordable housing is supposed to be delivered off site on that one. And and they've extended the planning um consent on that. And there's been a legal um uh, declaration that they've made a a a, a a significant development site so that the planning permission can be extended but still no sign of anything starting i mean they've really got to look at themselves in the mirror these people they they they, they you know they're selling the public a pub this is it, let's have this argument but they're arguing on the weakest possible case that they could put and okay to me that makes them pretty useless politicians you know, you, you need to fight your battles on your firm ground, and this ain't it. Mm. Do you remember Lisa McKenzie? Did I did I ever send you the podcast I did with her? She's part. Of, she she was part of Class War. She's up near uh, University of Durham. She uh, she calls herself the working class academic. She was the one who um, she campaigned against the poor doors. What do you think of that? You know, when you have a building and you have one entrance for rich people and the yeah. other one for what's the I, deal with that break it down i remember all of that stuff happening i i, I think it's ridiculous i mean well, I, I, but are you know. okay but are you okay so the allegation is that it's a form of apartheid come yeah, on i i think it is i i hate gated developments and oh, i yeah uh, 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 and uh i <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I yeah, I I, I don't support that, I don't, and I don't think there's any need for it, you know. But I, that's just me. I mean, I I mean, I'm a libertarian, so I mean, if 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 if, if um, like if people want to have gentlemen's only clubs, then go for it. Or if people want to have smoking rooms in pubs, then go. You know, that's me. I mean, if if if. As long as you make provision and other people can go, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't want to be a member of a gentleman's club, you know, but look, people do. Well, that's up to them. If that's what floats their boat, then let them, you know, what, 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 it's got nothing to do with me. I'm just not interested. Well, it's funny that you say that because all of these uh, meetings happened at the Carlton Club, which I understand is only for conservatives. Have you been in there? I've been to the Carlton Club several times. Yes. Yeah. One of my father's friends was a member. <laughs> Did you say your father was what was a member? One of my father's, father's friends was a member of the Carlton Club many years ago. So, yeah, and I've been there several times. It's, it, you know, it's all right. I, I personally wouldn't want to be a member. The, the interesting one is the Travellers Club down on St. James's, because all the spooks get in there. That, that, that's an interesting place to sit and pay. I've been in there a few times, too. I'd, I'd, I'd rather be a member of the Travellers Club than the Carlton Club any day of the week. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll leave it at that on those particular <laughs> topics for now, I think, just in case um, I start uh, going into the wrong areas. Um, well, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for uh, for that really? update. I'm just wondering um, whether I will telephone or what I will do, because it's you know, it's been a while since I've sort of had a look at something whilst it's actually happening and had any information that really I mean, that everyone should have that. It looks like no one has. Um, so I wonder whether I should telephone a a Tower Hamlets reporter or so here's what I'm thinking in my head at the moment there's the Tower Hamlets reporters you yeah, know for the area to find out what they're up to there's uh the local uh groups I was the architects journal and ask the architects journal what they make of it architecturally you know do they think it's a good scheme or a bad scheme with all of that gorgeous public open domain space you okay, know. yeah, so you've got that component. So you've got the aesthetic and practical and all of that stuff there uh, for the enjoyment of the space. Then you've got the financial and you've got the political. And the financial is the thing that seems to be pushed as a as a way of talking about the political, as a way of saying that it's massive corruption. I mean, it's amazing. You know, all of the quotes, everything's like, oh, like that. There's, there's no corruption. So just here. ignore that. Okay. <laughs> It's just a ridiculous allegation. It it really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 
that someone has not been asked to jump over another fence, which they, you know, quite legitimately probably said, that's a fence that I cannot jump over and will not jump over. OK, we've been through this process. You, you, you have squeezed the pips out of out of this development as far as we can go. OK, yeah, we can't go anymore. Yeah, you're stopping in terms, of, in terms of our risk appetite this far and no further. OK, guess that, who was... that, 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 and, and that is a legitimate position. It doesn't make you bloody Rackman. Yeah. OK, guess who was uh, written to? I shall only say that his initials are M. S. Guess who was written to by um, one of the uh, shadow cabinet in relation to this? M. S. I have no idea. Sometimes referred to as M. P. Um, Mark Sedwill, who our I, friend calls. I, I, I saw that that they'd written to Mark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. And then you know what that starts reminding me of? This has got it's got nothing to do with affordable housing. It's the cabinet got... secretary. Guess what it starts reminding me of? It starts from because, as you probably could imagine, I don't particularly like Jenrick. What I've seen and heard of him, I don't particularly like him. But um, but then I, it, I, it... I don't know him. To me, it's like policeman. He looks really young to me. I'm mean, yeah. on now, but but to me, I kind of think blimey, he should be in the sixth form debating society. You know, well, it's I... funny. It's funny that you say that because Quint, Quentin Letts. Uh, who, you know, who's very naughty. I don't like him. You know, he can come off like he's racist, which I don't particularly think he is, but you know, he can come off, you know, I, I used to read him at the Daily Mail. And so he's gone to the Times and mm. he's, and you know, he's so naughty. When he decides to play playground bully, he really does it so well uh, on the political oh, sketch. Oh, good, good luck on that with, uh, with Richard Desmond. Oh, OK. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's, he's obviously brought Desmond in. Desmond's, Desmond's, he's, he's totally... He's totally ridiculed Desmond, but obviously Desmond could take it. Uh, well, but then, but yeah. <laughs> obviously Desmond doesn't care. But then he brought in um, what's his name? And the thing is, he's done this sketch. It's the political sketch yeah. is above the story today, just to try and make it a bit more fun for people. And so he's talked about. Uh, Here's one for the Islanders. We are Millwall, super Millwall. No one likes us. We don't care. <laughs> well, is Desmond is Desmond uh, a Millwall man? Well, no, he's sort of North London. But, sure, but, sure. Um, but, uh, he's been in the East End. I mean, you know. I... Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's an old Millwall football chant, which kind of seems appropriate. <laughs> well, Sedwell's, Sedwell's being contacted. But what it reminds me of is, in the same way that I don't like Jenrick, um, I never particularly like Gavin Williamson. But it didn't stop me from feeling sorry for him when he got sacked. Because, you know, when he got sacked and he obviously wasn't responsible for well, the whole thing. And Sedwell, Sedwell was, um, sacked him, even though he was innocent. And the police wouldn't investigate, and which would have exonerated him. And obviously he's back. So I think what happens is you can be unlikable and even naughty, get away with it. And then you go down for something that you're not responsible for. That, you uh, know, that you're innocent on. And this is what's going on. But anyway, that's a bit too much... Um, the macro picture, isn't it? Well, that's got, you know, nothing to do with this. I mean, the, the, the simple fact is that, you know, even just on planning terms, they, they've, they've picked they, they've picked the wrong one here. They, they couldn't yeah. possibly pick the worst example of the point they're trying to make. That, that's, that's the simple fact of it. And the reason they've picked this is that, um, you know, that they obviously feel under some sort of time pressure. And I think probably to do with the Brexit extinction date. And uh, they're trying to bring all, all pressure to bear on making Boris look bad. I mean, you know, Bo Boris can do that all by himself. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, know it, 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 the, you know, many times in these circumstances, the best thing to do is just to look on and shake your head in, 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 in mild dismay. Well, but, what's, what's also funny is that these these periodicals, it's like as if they've got different teams doing different things. So most of the people on the front few pages are doing everything to prevent it looking like Boris is doing anything that's worth getting what, into what, trouble. What, what, and then what, on the investigation, they've got this other little thing where they're going, oh, look, it's so corrupt. You're approaching it on the basis that they're actually trying to report news. They're not. They're trying. It's a Procrustean attempt to fit um, loosely assembled 
fake news into their own abject narrative. I mean, that's basically what, what they're about. Yeah. Nothing to do with news reporting and all the rest of it. But like I said, I mean, I'd be really interested to know what the Architects Journal or, okay. you know, um, you know, back in the day, it used to be Sir Christopher Strong, wasn't it, that they'd all go and ask about architecture. Oh, know? really? Okay, right. Uh, but, um, you know, I, who, who, whoever the current, you know, person is, I mean, if you've got an anti-modernist architecture and a modernist type to, you know, I, there are always discussions about what's a good scheme, what's a bad scheme. But I, there's no doubt that is a really high quality scheme. And it's it's got wonderful uh public spaces designed into it. it it's i mean I, I really i genuinely think it's absolutely wonderful do you and think I, I should do you think i should call the spooks at um private eye uh i, I don't know are they relevant anymore i, I really don't well, know no, i think they're very captured but yeah. they go out, i think they go out on tuesday bigger old farts than i am the thing is that, ooh, uh, I think... You, do you know who I'd talk to if I were you? The, the guy at Empty Homes, I mean, I've been trying to get them to get in touch with me because I'd love to talk to them. But get there to... They wrote a brilliant report about the problem of mm. the Empty Homes in I London. think they replied to one of your tweets yesterday. Uh, yeah, he did. He took, when I was calling it Planning Game, he said, it's funny, it's called Planning Game, isn't it? I mean, So he was, kind of, he was kind of agreeing with you sort of thing, or...? Does well, that mean, did he, does I don't that mean know who's agreeing with me. I mean, I, yeah. agree with, I agree with their whole report. I mean, I agree with him. Does that mean that he watched the video? No. I, I really? assume probably watched some of it. I mean, 15, or, I think 15 people have shown up on your view counter. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, that's yesterday. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I mean, I give you some idea. My YouTube channel, um, if I put it on my BitTuber channel, okay, I've put two up about... Um, about this sort of thing and and, and one of them got over two thousand views right uh, at, which on my youtube channels had about 18 or 19. okay so i i don't think the youtube algorithms are doing right yeah any favors but there we are all right well look, i'm going to sign off now and i may come through with an update a bit later on all right mate thanks a lot roger talk soon take care bye, bye.